act according to that. Yeah, but people with some control can make sure that they don't tell lies, they don't commit qayba. This is, this is possible. But still in their heart, they may have, you know, like for example what? Some, sometimes people, you know, hate another person. They, do any, they don't do anything, but still this is bad that you hate a mu'min or a person who has no guilt. Yeah, that is not hasad. Yeah, that is some. Even in the case of a criminal that who is going to be punished, what is important that this must not be because of my personal negative feeling towards that person. It must be because I feel that this person has done something wrong and must be punished. But I do this all in a very cool and in a very patient manner. Not that I want to satisfy, you know, myself and I want to cool down my anger, so I am going to punish that person. And then I call this is Islamic punishment or this is, for example, legal punishment or whatsoever. You remember the story of Imam Ali in the war of Khaybar? That even a person like Amr ibn Abdabud, in the battlefield, Imam didn't kill him because he split, you know, to the face of Imam. Imam went walking and then came back. And we have in Islamic, you know, a legal system that even a criminal who is going to be executed, no one, the judge or agents, no one is allowed to treat him badly or impolitely. They cannot say, okay, this man is a murderer, so we must curse him or do, you know, whatever we want. No. Allah said he is going to be punished. Okay, you must punish him. But you cannot satisfy your anger, you know, by doing whatever you want with that person. But uh, uh, this is different from the concept of ha hasad. Okay, so in the case of akhlaq, you don't think that because this is not a sin by itself, so it's okay, I leave it. No. Even if it is not a sin by itself, still it's a bad quality, it's an ugly quality. And you want to get rid of that. Or, for example, to be generous. I give you another uh, quality, but which is good. This was a bad quality. To be generous from a legal point of view is not wajib. There is no mujtahid, no faqih, who says that you must be generous. If you are not generous, you are committing sin. What is important is I give the people they do right, okay? So for example, if I borrow money from the people, I should give them back. If I owe people some money, some service, whatsoever, I should render to them those services. But I don't need to be generous, okay? This is from a legal point of view. But what about a moral point of view? <laughs> to be generous, is very highly recommended and this is the character of the prophets and the character of Allah's friends and saints to be generous and indeed this is to resemble to some extent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself who is the most generous he never gain anything from what he gives his love is unconditional okay so you see that something may be from a legal point of view not necessary but from a moral point of view becomes present. or let me give you another example for example to be brave from a legal point of view it's not wajib to be brave what is wajib, what is compulsory is that whenever there is an, 
act which you must perform it, you should not let your fear stop you. Okay? This is wajib. For example, if I must say my prayer, and then I am in the house alone, and it's dark, okay? So I may, you know, be fearful. So I shouldn't say, okay, because I am frightened, so I don't say my prayer today. I wait till, you know, it becomes, you know, the day, and then I, no. Here, fear is causing a legal problem. Because it's stopping you from practicing what is wajib. Or, for example, if there is a battle, and you must take part in that battle to defend your dignity or your nation or state or whatsoever, which is important. And because of fear, you don't take part. Here, it becomes legally prohibited. Okay? But just to be fearful as such, is not haram okay but from a moral point of view this is a sign of weakness this is something which is not good if I am fearful I must be brave and I must know that everything is in hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why I should be fearful in the beginning of the revolution in Iran, 15 years before, you know, Imam Khomeini came back, you know, sent in, Imam Khomeini first was sent into exile for 15 years. So when he took him, they took him from Qom to Tehran, they were very scared because they thought that if people realize that they are taking, you know, their marja, so it would be create problems. So what they did, they switched off the car and they just pushed the car to the lane in which the house of Imam was there so that they make no noise. And they started knocking the door of the house of Imam Khomeini. And in that night, Imam Khomeini was sleeping in the opposite house, which was for his son. So they knocked the door, the servant came, and they said, where is Ruhullah Khomeini? He said, he's not here. So they started you know, beating him. And Imam was doing tahajjud in, his, in the opposite. So he opened the window and said, I am Ruhullah Khomeini. Why do you want, you know, what do you want from this man? So they took him out. And they were very scared. Even on the way to Tehran, they didn't let Imam Khomeini to stop for his prayer. And Imam said, okay, le let me... Just do some, you know, for example, tayammu, whatsoever. They didn't let. They were very scared. So, Imam Khomeini later said that in that time, I referred to my heart and I felt no fear at all. You know, you are taking with the agents of the regime to, you don't know where, in such a, you know, situation, and you feel no fear at all. And indeed, you know, he was telling those people, don't be frightened. There is no one, you know, who is aware of us. No one is going to follow you. So, this is something that much more than fiqh. This is the spirituality that a person doesn't fear at all. And in his life, you know, he proved. This is not a claim that I may claim. And then... When I see a cockroach, you know, I am frightened. But someone like Imam Khomeini, his life you know, sh shows this. So, this is the difference between akhlaq and fiqh. Just in bracket, I should tell you, you find it inshallah in the book, that there are certain qualities that even from a fiqh point of view, they are haram. We must be careful. You shouldn't think that, okay, all the qualities from a legal point of view are not haram. Like what? Like al min rawhillah, despair from the mercy of Allah. Is this an act or a quality? It's a quality. Or you may say this is an act of soul. So this is not act in the normal sense. 
But 